All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. I'm on the road, but there I travel. I mean, a nice king suite, relaxing and enjoying myself, putting in some work just for you. All right. Anyhow, listen, a story break today. And the story said, uh, killer Roshane Barnett baptized in prison. If you all remember who Roshane Barnett is, Roshane Barnett is the individual who killed his cousin and all her children and he got sentenced recently to prison in Jamaica and that's the person we're talking about so it makes front page news that he got baptized in prison I have so much to say but before me say all that shout out to the Jamaica star let's read through what information was put out so we can get into the story y'all just stick around for my opinion all right and I think my opinion is also very worthwhile watch this two months after being sentenced to serve life a life sentence for the murder of his family member in coco piece the man kill him cousin right clarendon convicted killer roshane barnett has decided to give his life to the lord the 23 year old was reportedly baptized during a ceremony that was held at the tower street correctional center where he's being kept we made him know say once he comes into God's family, he is no longer condemned. We don't know which pussy tell him that, but okay. We made him know say once he comes into God's family, he is no longer condemned. Okay. We don't preach and teach condemnation. Society might condemn you, but in the world, in the word, the word, the word of the Lord, in the word, once you live in God, you are not condemned. But if you live in sin, you are. So, we kind of bring it across to him in such a way that he came to a point where he said, I surrender. A well-placed source said, the source described the occasion as something else. As the quintuple murderer sobbed a little before surrendering his life. He cried a little bit before surrendering his life to this God. Alright? He... He never really cried still enough, but he could feel the sorrow in his heart, is what, is what one, the, the source said. Barnett is 23 years old, and he was sentenced to life in prison in October for murdering his cousin, Kamisha Wright. Rest in peace, Kamisha. She was 31 years old, and her four children. Their bodies were discovered in their Cocoa Peace home in Clarendon, my place with chop wounds and their throats slashed on June of 21. Barnett, who hails from Wilson Run, Trelawney, will have to serve 61 years in prison and eight months before he is even eligible for parole. Thank God, he's already 23. He must serve at least 61 before them even consider him for parole. Some people say, should I get more? But me don't know nobody who will really live 61 years plus 23 years and do the maths you do the maths and then come out healthy and strong and can do anything again so basically that's a real life sentence understand anyhow the massacre shook the island as many labeled barnet a monster i myself would say this was the most prolific killing out of jamaica this year you know enough people get killed in jamaica this year you know some even children because i still remember the story where gunman kick off the door kill the two little youth them and their grandmother when they were really were after somebody else see so that was bad and bad and not so bad but given the dynamics of this story with Roshan, it was his cousin it was his cousin that was close to him it was his cousin that looked out for him you know you have some family member don't even fought upon you but it was his cousin that looked out for him and he ended up taking her life over some frivolous stuff but not only did he take her life the man killed all our picnic them with her too seeing so i think that was like the worst killing out of jamaica for 2022 as we head over into 2023 right so the massacre shook the island everybody was like yo madness not like we haven't seen madness before but this was mad mad it was not him but it is him he was just a vessel used to carry out this act he said listen church me can't believe me surprise all myself 
I can't believe me would I do something like this. It was like he was saying that he was overtaken by spirits. So they ended up having to pray over him before he was baptized. The source said. So then I get ready for baptize him and him daddy I talk about saying can't believe sir. Him himself do this. It's like some kind of spirit take him over and lead him to go do this horrendous outrageous act that he did murdering his cousin and all her children. See? Um, Barnett is the 42nd inmate to be baptized since January. With majority of them that are being baptized are also serving a life sentence. Now if you ask me, are the reality a kick in so them now come out of prison no time soon and them start look for salvation to deal with what they are going through in there. Because you know so Jamaican prison is not like the US prison, okay? Floor not clean, toilet don't flush all the time, all them kind of something there. Cells are not two man to a bigger cell and them thing there. Alright. The source also added that Barnett was now in his right mind. He wasn't in his right mind when he did it. After spending several weeks in counseling with the prison chaplain, the source also stated that the baptism was attended by everyone inside of the prison. Carl is like him as some celebrity in there. Everybody in the prison want to come see the youth where kill one woman and all our picnic them get baptized. As a matter of fact, the baptism was already started and he sent word that he wanted to come down and get baptized too. So the officer had to go and escort him down and back forget him baptism. That was the situation. The individual said that when inmates give their hearts to the Lord, they receive teaching about the word for them to understand that they are getting what they are getting into. The chaplain also provided biblical and psychosocial counseling to ensure the inmates fully understand the steps that they are taking. Sometimes some of these guys would accept, say, yes, they want to serve the Lord, but then at the end of the day, they were in a moment when everything is going to be a particular way. So you just want to be a part of the fever. The source said, I don't know what kind of fever they might talk about. But anyway, now upon hearing news of Barnett's baptism, Gwendolyn McKnight, who is the mother of and grandmother of the deceased, was overjoyed. <laughs> now, uh, uh, listen, Miss talk. she was overjoyed. He was baptized? Really? Hallelujah, Jesus! Mm -hmm. As, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. This is what it says. He was baptized, question mark. Hallelujah, Jesus, exclamation. Mm. I always tell myself that because I forgive him, I hope that God speaks through him and I hope he changes lifestyle and know what he did was so wrong to his own flesh and blood who cared for him. I just wish him all the best in there, McKnight said. This is the woman whose daughter and grandchildren he killed. Her religion says forgive, let go, and rejoice if they come around and say they are baptized now and have given their life to the Lord. Now defense attorney Tamika Harris, who represented Barnett at his trial, also expressed joy that he was baptized. If this is true, I am happy that he has turned himself over to the Lord, is what his attorney said. All right, so we read through the article. So Flo, I'm going to give him <laughs> opinion now. You hear me now, man? All right. First of all, let me say, wicked people. Wicked people always find religion after they get discovered in their wickedness. You see, while they're doing wickedness, them no member about God and baptize and church and anything. No, them no member about synagogue. Them no member about tabernacle. Them no member about no form of worship or nothing. Them just living on them evilness, right? Anytime they get discovered in their evilness, now them find God. Anytime they get caught and they are persecuted and confined and have no other choice, then them go find God. 
This is what I want everybody who has evil pre thoughts to think about. You see, you have your church, right? And then you have your karma. You have your God, your unseen God. And then you have karma. Just like how you have your God, you have karma. God, you can't see him. You can't see karma neither. You feel God, right? You feel karma too. So because you go to church with your evil self after you've done great evil, your God might forgive you in your mind. And I guess if you're thinking that in your mind, then you are forgiven. However, karma is of no religion, my friend. Karma don't care about your religion. Karma don't care about what deal you worked out with your God and how forgiven you are with your God. Understand? If you hurt somebody, hurt is going to come back around to you and it usually comes back around to you in a triple and double and triple fold where you really feel what it is that you have put somebody through, especially if it was a good person. In this particular case, she was a good person to Roshan. She was a good cousin and she had her children and he not only slaughtered her but he slaughtered her children as well right even in say a relationship you can't do nothing bad to somebody good that had good intentions for you and really treated you good and then expect that religion is going to save you that's you and your god business karma is still coming to visit you so always remember that sometimes we see some people are suffering up and we said to ourselves, said, Jesus Christ, but Mass George never do nothing to nobody. And my grandmother always used to say, no, no, no really, you know, get wrapped up in a feeling sorry for people. Sometimes when you see them suffering publicly, it's for things that they have done in the private. Right? People are find out about it, but karma did, and karma is on its way back to repay. With that said, make we talk about religion a little bit. So this is the number that religion has done on our minds. Religion has us. We are the only people on the face of the earth who give in to our religion and tell ourselves that some God is going to handle all this. What about avenging your daughter and your son's death when you have a chance to? Nah, vengeance is mine, say the Lord. Scriptures them quote and calm you down. Your fire was out by religion. So you don't have no fire. So you see, all the others, watch how them operate. If you touch one of theirs, holy pound are dead. If you touch one of theirs, holy pound will get blacklisted, blackmail. You know them use black already. Blacklisted, blackmail, all the other kind of black where you can think about. You know, if you say the wrong thing about them, you get hurt even after you apologize you still get hurt as a lesson we the only people who follow this whole let go and let god thing now i firmly believe in let go and let god but not all the time i can tell you in front of this camera right here with every fiber in my being that if you molest rip touch any of my picnic them you're dead and I don't care about church, religion, prison, none of that law, man law upon earth, none of that is going to save you. You understand? And somehow we live like that and then and we are committed to it fully. And then there are those who soften up. I could not find it in my heart. I may have to be honest. Remember, you know, you come to SoFlo TV, so you're going to get SoFlo's opinion. I fully expect the people in the comment section, some of them are going to say, no SoFlo leave it to the lord because god said why because that's how we were indoctrinated but i'm not under that indoctrination there again so i fully i'm committed to whatever comes after this wrath of our revenge takes place i could not find it in my heart to forgive somebody that wiped out my daughter and all her children all of my grand picnic them gone just like that and you get a chance now for the behind bars eating free food and sleeping well and talking about you give your life to the lord i have people back there that are bigging you up in spirit telling you that once you give yourself to the lord you are no longer condemned and you're a good man now and a free man now and free in the spirit now fuck all that 
There won't be none. Pardon my language is the one bad word me I cuss and me not cuss no more. But it not going so. Me would have somebody back there try stab up him blouse and skirt. Tab him in his neck. Tab out on him. Yeah, them. Me want, I want revenge the whole time. I want sufferation. You understand? And I honestly think, honestly think that this is one of the things that has done a number on us. Let me explain to you why. You see, when people grow up believing that they can do wrong, but all they have to do is someday feel sorry about it and pray about it and ask God for forgiveness about it, then this God will forgive them and all those things will be washed away. All your sins are washed away. So now you have all them young gala out there take 20, 30, 40, 50 man before they meet the man who actually says to her, you know, I'm in a business even if you have a frigged up way about yourself. I love you so much, I'm going to work through all that. Somebody was really ready to commit to her now and build life with her now. By the time she reached him, for her track list so long of men who have seen her body hole and her pum pum and go up in her and come bucket her, jerk off in her basically, bust them nut and left it in her belly. For how long and how many. The list so long. That she's so embarrassed, she have to tell you, say, don't ask me about my past, it's none of your business. And in herself, she feels justified because she has been told ever since she was little that all she have to do is pray for forgiveness from the Almighty God and she good. Same thing for the man them. Them out here, wild out themselves, whore out themselves, don't take care of their children, do all kind of foolishness and friggery. And then when them reach a certain age in life where life slows them down, then them start talking about God and I found God and give my life to the Lord. What about the children that you left behind that grew up without any kind of love? Man did a rip off your daughter because you were not around and her mama was so broke because she didn't have your help. She had to do whatever it was to survive including shack up with some man who she probably never really even did like. Cause him decides to say her pum pum so good him go pay all the bills and take her two little rug rat them that you left with her right so now you got him touching on your daughter she's growing up messed up because she was touched on by a grown man our stepfather while she was growing up you see the cycle you created don't think when you go to god and talk about my god has forgiven me that that karma of getting that child messed up in life and now she this is gonna last her, her whole life you know most people who are molested them it lasts them them whole life the trauma you know some of them don't tell, but you can tell that it happened to them. You understand? Because they can't form intimate relationships and hold relationships together. They always on the defensive. Them boomy. They have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. They got a host of issues going on in them life. It was you that caused that. Because you did like the sling wood everywhere, breed up the place, brag about how many kids you have, and never was present in any of them life where you stand up. Well, when time people come around, when that wolf came around and looked that way and saw your daughter, he should have seen you. And him say, no, I'm going to pick somebody else. When them come around me, I'm a beg God. I beg the almighty creator of heaven and earth and everything with life. Please sustain me and keep me here long enough. Because when anything like that happen and them come around me, the first thing them say is a beast. And they know. I don't want to mess with none of them picking them because we can tell already it's going to be murderation over this one, right? So they're going to mess with somebody else's children. This is a real life stuff, may I tell you, you know. So at the end of the day, that's the number that religion has done on us. It has people thinking, you have brothers killing brothers out here. We kill each other like that because, first of all, we don't see God in us. You know, the part where it's made in his image and likeness, if you look, at the image they've been showing us since we were born till now, that image doesn't look nothing like we. It looks like some other people. So not only are we subservient to those other people because we believe that they look like this God that we worship, but also we are told that if I kill my brother, I can ask for forgiveness from Almighty God. And after this life, I will have a life in heaven. Milk and honey, fountains flow, and all this. Bullshit. And I call bullshit. All right. I'm going to leave this one right here for now. Go ahead and put your comments in the comment section below. I'm going to talk about this some more. Russian get baptized in prison after I'm killing cousin and kill off all our picnic them with her. Baptism.
Hmm. Roshane Barnett. Alright. God go with you. Whatever God that is. Cause I'm in a wango. I'm in a wango. I'm out. Peace.